Randy Kraft is a convicted serial killer and rapist who murdered at least 16 young men. Randy Kraft was born on the 19th of March, 1945, in Long Beach, California, to Harold and Opal Kraft. He was the youngest of their children and the male. He received plenty of attention from his mother and sisters because of this. He started school at the age of five, coming from a good home, and seemed quite popular at school and very social. Anyone would think that this guy was destined for great things. He graduated high school in 1963 and was 10th in his class out of 390 students. Even in university, Kraft was highly involved in social activities, and one of his passions was politics. He knew that he was gay in high school, but kept it secret from his family and friends. After graduating, Kraft went to study economics at the all-male Claremont Men's College. Days later, Kraft joined the U.S. Air Force. Kraft's family was shocked when he told his parents that he was gay. His mother was quite laid back about it, but his father wasn't too happy. He also decided to tell the Air Force about his sexuality. Kraft was discharged on medical grounds, although he later said that he was released because he had come out to the higher-ranking officers. After being released, he continued to enjoy his life as a gay. Kraft resumed his bartending career, shed weight on a diet of speed and beer, and plunged full-time into the gay lifestyle. His old friends were amazed, trying to understand when Kraft told them, there is a part of me that you will never know. It took another 14 years for them to find out what he meant. During the 1970s and 1980s, the victims of Kraft were among the many dead bodies discovered near highways in California. He is also known as the Freeway Killer, Southern California Strangler, or the Scorecard Killer. His target was young men and teenage boys in their late teens to mid-twenties, usually hitchhikers, runaways, or men he picked up in gay bars. Most of his crimes were committed in California. A few were killed in Oregon and Michigan, due to his job as a computer tech that allowed him to travel. His first victim was a 13-year-old boy, Joey Francher, who ran away from his home. Kraft convinced the young boy that he could move with him in his house, and once he had Joey in his home, he drugged and raped him. The boy managed to escape after Kraft went to work, staggered barefoot to a nearby bar. Francher led police back to Kraft's place in search of his shoes. They found the shoes along with illegal medicines and 76 photos of Kraft having sex with numerous boys and men. Due to the fact that the police didn't have a warrant to search the house, and Joey also did not report the rape, nothing was done. They couldn't arrest him. The sexual orientation of his victims differed, but they all suffered great pain before their deaths. On October 5, 1971, police found a dead body stripped entirely decomposed beside Ortega Highway in southern Orange County. The body was identified as the 30-year-old gay bartender Wayne Joseph Duquette, who had been missing for two weeks. With no active connections for over a year, the day after Christmas of 1972 turned out to be the start of a thread of horrifying murders. After almost 15 months, the next 20-year-old victim, Marine Edward Daniel Moore, was found beside the 405 freeway in Seal Beach. He was last seen alive in his Camp Pendleton barracks on Christmas Eve. A motorist found him at 1.45 a.m., apparently dumped from a moving car. After Moore's body was discovered, there would be three John Doe's, one of which was entirely dismembered, with the head being entirely decapitated. The head was found in Long Beach, the torso, right leg, and arms in San Pedro, the left leg in Sunset Beach, and the murders of 20-year-old Ron Wabey and 23-year-old Vincent Cruz Mestis. Ron Wabey vanished while bar hopping on July 28, 1973. He was fully clothed but barefoot, was found two days later beside the 405 freeway in Seal Beach. Wabey had been found tied and hung upside down before he was killed. For torture that included bites on his stomach and penis, one of his own missing socks was found in his rectum. The discovery of Kraft's crimes happened on the 14th of May, 1983. 
He was pulled over by the cops as he was driving roughly due to being drunk. Kraft came out of his vehicle with his pants unzipped, looking confused and smelling very intoxicated. The police found a lying man in front of the seat with his private parts exposed and wrists tied together. There were signs of suffocation around his neck too. First, they thought the man was sleeping, but they removed the jacket covering him. They discovered the man was dead. The man was Terry Gambrell, a 25-year-old U.S. Marine officer who was last seen by friends who said that he was hitching a ride home from a party. Police also found blood on the passenger seat, explicit photographs of various young men who were either dead or sleeping, a scorecard which listed his 61 victims with nicknames according to what they do and where they live. Some of the nicknames for his victims were New Year's Eve and Deodorant. The list of messages gave Randy Kraft his title as the scorecard killer. Probably the most eerie and terrifying part of the Kraft's murders was the scorecard. Twiggy was obviously a dark and twisted reference to the tree branch that had been shoved into the dead man's rectum. The 33rd entry was titled Marine Head in reference to Mark Allen Marsh, a 20-year-old Marine who was found with his heads and hands cut off. Kraft, however, denies the allegations and says that they refer only to his friends and roommates. The names of the list representing a taken human life, a person he murdered cold blood. Kraft is also known as the Freeway Killer, because many of his victims' bodies were discovered beside or near freeways. Kraft's trial had been the longest and most expensive in Orange County history. Kraft did his best to delay the trial, and like a lot of psychopaths, he tried to dodge the system. Unfortunately, Randy Kraft is still alive and well on death row at San Quentin State Prison. He has never given any explanation or exhibited any interest in clearing any unsolved murders. Think of all the lives he's destroyed and the families of the victims too. Not only is his number of victims astonishing, but that the way he murdered these men is even more astonishing. As a result of his stubbornness, authorities may never know for sure just how many men Kraft murdered. He caused so much pain and suffering that we can't imagine. Where did all this anger and sadist behavior come from? Though he had a good childhood and seemed to be quite a talented guy before carrying out his sickening acts. That's all for today's video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to be notified of our next ones. And I'll see you in the next video.